So I think there's, there, you know, you have to be, there's a carefully orchestrated, you know, set, set of escalation measures that, that you would take. And so I think it was pragmatic and, and, and probably the right move to wait until they actually declared that they were going to move. I mean, they've, all, they've always had some military presence there in there, right? We know that, but this is a qualitative change. And so I, I think until that actually happened, we needed to hold those back. And then if they, I think it's also important to distinguish between troop, Russian troops, you know, increasing Russian troops in Eastern Ukraine versus an all out invasion of the rest of Ukraine. I think uh, the administration has even tougher sanctions lined up for that possibility. Are these sanctions going to change Putin's calculus or end up hurting the Russian people more than the oligarchs? I, I think that they'll definitely hurt the Russian people. I don't think sanctions will stop him. I think this is a core issue for him. This is a giant legacy issue. I also get the sense based on the survival, you know, the, the health of the, the Russian economy after 2014 or their ability to, to deal with the sanctions. Uh, they're a very large reserve. I think that they're pretty optimistic that they can survive the sanctions. I think that might be... There might be some over optimism there, um, but I also think that sanctions against oligarchs don't typically work. Uh, I've, you know, my, the accounts I've heard is the, these guys typically wear these things as a, as a badge of honor. That being said, I do think a lot of these sanctions really, and just the invasion overall, when you consider foreign investment and things like that, really hurt the Russian economy in, in, the, in the mid to long term. So the West is now uh, characterizing this unequivocally as an invasion of Ukraine by President Putin and uh, Russian forces. How far does he go? Does he occupy the entire Donbass region? No, I think he goes all the way to the capital. I think what you're seeing right now is a lot of false flag operations. These claims that Ukrainians, the, the, the Eastern, the, you know, the people in the East are having to, to fight back this onslaught of Ukrainian offensives, which just isn't true. But I think this is the pretext he's trying to create so that when he actually invades the rest of Ukraine, that, that's his reason for going in, as false as it, as it is. Whoa. The other thing I would note is you don't need 150,000 Russian troops in the border to just recognize these regions. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.